Hi, my name is Dean Newland, CEO and founder of Mission Facilitators International. We've been around for nearly 30 years and been very blessed to be able to have worked in a lot of different organizations and industries, locally, nationally, and internationally, on all the different layers within a company. The individual layer, providing executive coaching, the team level, providing training and facilitation, the senior team level with providing some planning and strategic planning services, as well as the board. We've also done organizational development and large-scale culture change work. No matter where we are within whatever company, I do believe that each one of them has their own unique context, their own unique challenges, and therefore have needed their own unique set of customized solutions. And we've done pretty well in being able to do that. I think that we are excellent, actually, at designing customized solutions for these different companies and these different layers. However, it was about three or four years ago, after reviewing all of the work we've done, I started to realize that there are some very common challenges that all of these companies are facing. Not only that, these same challenges are showing up at all the different layers within a company. So what I want to do here today in this short presentation is to do a few things. One, to go over what those common challenges are. Two, to share with you what I think are the opportunities that those challenges are affording us to look at. Three, to provide you an organizational value alignment model that we've been working on and have been getting some very positive results. And then lastly, to share with you the impact of this organizational value alignment. What's the benefit if we do this particular process? So let's start off with challenges. There are three. Number one, we miss opportunities and risks by developing only one part of the business instead of the interdependent whole. The person over in marketing who heads up that team is having a hard time holding people accountable. Let's get them a coach. The IT department is finding that they don't really have a common vision. Let's do some sort of a facilitation. The executive team is not quite clear what business they're in. Let's do strategic planning. All of those make perfect sense. However, is there ever a time where we step back and find out how they all connect? How they all can synergistically support one another? When we have this splintered silo approach, we miss huge opportunities to uncover problems, to learn from those problems, and to create systemic long-term solutions. Number two. Employees don't see how they add value beyond their own efforts to the team, to the organization, let alone even to the customer. As Daniel Pink said in his book, Drive, we all have this intrinsic motivation to be able to do work that is valuable beyond ourselves, to be able to have a purpose that we serve that is also experienced by others. As Simon Sinek talks about, we all want to be able to express our own personal why. We want to be able to know what the why is of our organization so that we can feel aligned to it. There was a Gallup poll done on engagement in 2019, and it said that 34% of all employees that they surveyed were engaged in their work. That means that 66% were either actively looking for other work or were just phoning it in. Now, that was considered to be a very good number, 34%. So we have a huge opportunity to be able to find a way to be able to engage people in meaningful work that satisfies this need for connection and that they are doing something bigger than themselves. And number three... We tend to address the symptoms and not the source. Organizations are structured for execution. They are not structured for learning. So when you think about it, it's all about getting the work done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Speed from point A to point B is valued. However, we don't necessarily take a step back, reflect, and ask ourselves, 
What were the challenges that we had? What were the failures we encountered? And what do we learn about them? We don't take a step back and find out, well, that was a particular issue we had, but what was the root cause? What was the source? So what we're doing is we're putting in a lot of band-aids over symptoms. We're not getting to the root cause of those problems. And that then creates just more problems, most likely burnout, and we're missing huge opportunities for learning and creativity and innovation. So those are the three major challenges that I see that we are facing no matter what organization you're in, profit, nonprofit, Phoenix or Dubai, team level, organizational level, individual level, we all sort of face these particular challenges. Now, what are the opportunities these challenges are causing us to think about? These are things that I came up with. Number one, we need a roadmap that aligns the individual to the team from the team to the end user or even the customer. If we have that spine, that connectivity, we now know that our work is valued by others and we see the benefit of our efforts to something greater than ourselves. We also can start to uncover where the symptoms are and find the root source. Number two, we need a focus on the individual, team, organizational purpose and service. So yes, we need to be doing quality metrics. We need to be able to cut costs. We need to be able to increase revenue. All of those things are important, but we need to also keep very closely connected to the reason why we're here in the first place. What is the purpose? What is the product of our product? Why are we doing what we're doing? Can we identify that individually as a team and as an organization? And do they all scale and support one another? Number three, we don't always need more information. We need a way to translate knowledge and create new habits. That doesn't mean that IT and informatics or in finance and all the other types of organizational departments that provide information aren't valuable. Boy, are they ever. However, the trick is, can we translate that information into new habits? Can we find a way to communicate what we know in a way that others can hear it? And then lastly, we need an upstream tool that will help us answer fundamental questions that are vital for all of the major aspects of the employee, leadership, team, and organizational development. So often I've been in a coaching session with somebody and talked about a particular issue, realizing that the problem that they're trying to solve is more systemic, more pervasive, or we're doing a strategic planning session and a particular person is not quite clear about what customer they're really trying to serve, which then brings to light is we really need to create some bedrock, foundational, common understanding about what our business is and how it all aligns. So those are the four, I believe, challenges that we need to be able to be finding some opportunities to address. This organizational value alignment is a process that we've been working on for the last few years that I want to share with you right now. It addresses a lot of the things we've already talked about. It starts off at the top with this customer category conversation. Most organizations and teams have about three to five different types of customers. I don't mean the name of the customer. I mean the type of the customer. So we can kind of get a composite of what that particular customer is all about. And we do that by asking ourselves questions like, if we were them, what are their major beliefs? What are their major desires? And what keeps them up at night? What are their worries? And when we go through that sort of process, we really now get into their skin and see the world through their eyes. Because if we can't do that, how can we provide them the kind of service that they so desire? We often create solutions because they're easy for us to execute, not because they're needed by our customer. The next layer then is around the customer promise. What is the highest and best hopeful result that we would want that particular customer to experience by engaging with us. If we're selling cars, it's not to sell cars to those people. 
we're ultimately trying to help people, for example, to experience freedom and adventure. That's the value that we're trying to provide them. That's the promise that we're trying to give them. And if we can identify what that particular customer ultimately wants through the promise we can give them, then our approach is customized to them. And each of our major customer categories has their own set of desires and beliefs and worries, as well as their own customer promise. Many times our marketing approach, many times our approach within companies is to do things that are easy for us to develop, that it's cost efficient, but it doesn't necessarily land where it needs to land. We miss the mark. The next level down is on the team, the team that is developing that particular promise. Could be the executive team, could be the marketing team, depends upon which lever we're talking about. And although we have many different ways to develop teams, there's uh, training and there's performance improvement plans and there's coaching, but if we can get to some common things that are the bedrock that make teams effective, then all the other work that we do it can be all that more effective and useful. So what is the mindset and promise that that particular team has for each other? What do we need to be able to believe in order to serve one another, but also to make us as effective as possible so that we can fulfill on the customer promise? If we will want to believe that we can help our customers transform, then the team needs to know how it needs to transform. Transformation begets transformation. And then lastly at the bottom is the team member. What does he or she need to do to be able to improve themselves from a mindset perspective, from a promise to themselves perspective, to the promise to they have to the team? How do they transform in order to be an effective member of the team? How do they transform in order to be worthy uh, a member of that particular team? So that's the spine of this particular model. To see it expanded, you can start to build it out where we have several different customer categories on top, each one having their own unique set of beliefs, desires, and worries, each one having their own unique customer promise that we help develop, you've developed, the team itself is now fully uh, clear about what makes it a team. It has the mindset figured out, what we need to be focused on. It also has the team promise with, that we make towards each other. We could call that guiding principles, but this is hand on heart. This is what I promise to you. I may not always fulfill on it, but I want you to call me out if I don't. It's what keeps us together. It's the glue. And then each individual person on the team also has their own mindset that they need to transform themselves in order to be worthy on that team. They also have their own set of promises that they need to make that they know that they might not always be good at. For example, I might not be good at conflict. That's just who I am. But I make a promise to you on the team that I will work towards getting better at conflict. That's just a quick example of that. So this is how this whole model gets built out. When we take a look at then the three different circles I have up here, then the impact I believe of this particular model will, ex will actually hit all different parts of the organization. It will make a difference in terms of how we develop the individual, how we develop the team, and how we develop the overall organization. This particular model is that upstream tool that will make all the activities that we do so much more effective. For example, on the organizational level side, imagine if we had all of that alignment that I just described and how that would improve our visioning process, our mission statement process, clarifying our values and our strategies and our structures and our metrics, the whole business development conversation and goals and services and branding and our communication. Imagine how much easier and effective it would be. Imagine that we would be able to see those solutions because we're not so focused on just execution, that we're truly creating a learning organization that is looking at the interdependent whole versus the siloed. On the team development level, imagine if we had that particular 
model played out, the alignment that we just talked about, that the visioning and the strategies of the team would be so much easier and guiding principles and how we run meetings and how we hold each other accountable and how we get involved in conflict and trust exercise and the whole inter-team collaboration, one team to another, and communication, coordination. If we could again address that larger interdependent aligned set of value that goes from individual to team to the client, whether that be internal, external, how much all of this would be so much more effective and, and useful. And then lastly, <clears throat> on the individual level, it, Again, succession planning, annual reviews, employee development, leadership branding, onboarding, influencing, motivating, incentives. All of that would be so much more useful if we had this alignment. If we could say to ourselves, we understand what all of these different pieces are and how they fit with each other. We have done the hard work, which now answers these major bedrock questions about those common challenges. We've addressed them, we've gotten to root cause, we've seen the interconnectivity of all of these different levels. And once we have that, all of our planning, all of our development, all of our training, all of our coaching has so much more, um, if you will, opportunity to, to be that much more effective. So if you have any questions about this particular model or anything that we do at Mission Facilitators International, please do not hesitate to reach out. We can be located at mfileadership.com where you will see all sorts of different types of resources, including podcasts and articles and tools and case studies. Thank you very much.